This is the first and very simple problem where we need the rotational and the translation equilibrium uh, to solve it. What we have is a horizontal beam uh, where on the right side we have a mass that is hanging from it and then we have two supports uh, supporting the beam. And we are interested in calculating the forces of each support. We cannot solve this with translation and equilibrium alone because we have two unknown forces, each support in the y direction, and uh, we cannot solve with two unknowns but only one equation from the y uh, direction sum of all forces. As with pure translational equilibrium problems, uh, we're going to start by drawing the free body diagram. So I'm going to draw the free body diagram uh, of my block with the mass attached. So here comes my free body diagram. Uh, so I have a block, well sorry, a beam with the mass attached. I'm gonna look at my object here and I'm cutting it free. So I have something here, I have something here. Uh, so each support will give me a support force. So I have a force here going up and I have a force here going up. Uh, let's call this one force 2, this one here force 1. Then we are on the earth so we have gravity, we have gravity on the beam which acts in the middle. So Fg beam and then we have gravity on the block, so Fg, or as we already have here, let's call this Fgm, hanging mass. As we did before, I'm going to select my coordinate system. Here I'm going to go with the regular one, x, y. What is new, I'm going to need to select the pivot point. So if the whole thing would be tilting, it probably would be tilting around uh, the right support. So I'm going to put my pivot point here. This is my pivot point. Now I can do my sum of all forces is zero in x, y, and the sum of all torque around my z axis is also zero. I'm going to start with my torque uh, because I hope that I can figure out as much as possible already from torque. So in set direction I have the sum of all torque must be zero. So who is causing me a torque around the pivot? Uh, I have a torque caused by force one. I have a torque caused by the gravity of the beam. And I have a torque caused by the gravity of the mass. F2 cannot cause any torque because it's directly uh, connected to the pivot point. So in the next line I'm going to look at my directions. Remember if I have something that is clockwise I'm going to take it as negative. If something is counterclockwise I'm going to take it as positive. So in my case my force 1 will cause me a torque that is clockwise, so negative. So negative torque 1. Uh, my gravity will tendentially turn in counterclockwise, so plus torque of the gravity of the beam. And my gravity of the mass, if anything, would turn it clockwise, so negative torque, gravity of the mass is zero. And I'm solving this for torque one, I'm simply bringing torque one on the other side, so my torque one is equal to the torque of gravity by the block minus the torque of gravity by the mass. And I'm plugging in my numbers that I have, given from uh, my dimensions here, 
I know that my force 1 is at the distance of 1 meter. Uh, my force of gravity here is at the distance of 0 0.5 meters. Uh, my other gravity, the shortest distance to the prolonged line of where my force here is acting, uh, is 0 0.3 meters. That means I have my force one force one so my force one times one meter is MGB so five kilograms times 10 meters per second square times 0 0.5 meters minus my torque caused by the hanging mass so another 5 kilograms times 10 times 0 0.3 meters this is 25 minus 15 therefore my force of the left support is 10 newtons So I'm going to need a bit more space, so I'm going to make this a bit smaller here, place it over here, and this guy here can go here. Because so what I'm doing next is I'm looking at my total of all forces in y direction. So I'm using my y equation. Sum of all forces in y must be zero. Forces in Y are my force 1 plus my force 2 plus my Fg of the beam plus my Fg of the block must be 0. Now I have positive my force 1, positive my force 2, minus 5 times 10, and minus another 5 times 10 is 0. So I have force 2 is uh, 2 times 5 times 10 plus my force 1. Sorry, minus my force 1, so minus 10, which gives me ninety newtons. And the problem is solved.